Hey guys, it's Ross Scott and on the Space Coach State, one of the TV shows that I was really into at the time when it first came out was Lost, because it was a great premise. And boy, did it end up disappointing massively at the end of all of those seasons, which I watched every single one because I demanded satisfaction, which I didn't get from that show. But I do have a few items from that show in my collection. First of all, um, part one of season one, the first 12 episodes, this probably is the best of the entire thing. After this, it just went downhill. Um, but yeah, it was a great premise, and um, but it's J.J. Abrams and his mystery box nonsense all over again. No wonder there were no satisfying answers, even though I did actually understand the ending, um, and there you see on the back. But yeah, I mean, some great performances in here, and like I said, great location, great concept, but again, because it's J.J. Abrams, um, the concept is fine, but we haven't actually worked it out all the way through to see what it is. Then it just doesn't really work. Like the whole smoke monster from the very first episode, I wasn't satisfied with its explanation um, by the end of that show. But anyway, that is the first 12 uh, episodes, which I don't even actually, it's been opened. So it has been watched once maybe, or some of the episodes have been watched. Then I also have this. The Lost Chronicles, a fishing companion book. This will be for season one. What's that sticker? Spoiler alert. Sp yes, spoiler alert. It's not satisfying. So let's just have a look through. Oh, pilot episode DVD inside. Is that still in here? That must be kicking around somewhere else. So let's just have a look through. Oh yeah, just... Because uh, they... Uh, bought a Tristar um, carcass from one of those desert boneyards, shipped it to the beach as wreckage. There you see some of it there. But yeah, I mean, first set, awesome. Uh, the very first shot, you know, Jack and his eye opening in the fox, and again, mirrored as the very last shot in the last episode as well. Um, very well done. I mean, JJ, he's a great director and he directed that first episode. Just not a great storyteller. There's Sawyer. I don't know any of their real names. There's Boone. Uh, Kate. <laughs> oh, God. Whenever it was a Kate episode, I was like, oh, God, it's a Kate episode. Because it's always so depressing and predictable. She's in trouble with the law and her life is terrible. <laughs> then there's John Locke, of course. The guy in the wheelchair, then not in a wheelchair. And the dog. And of course the guy going, Walt! <laughs> he was the most annoying character, I think. There you see Kate, whatever her name. Evangeline Lily. And obviously she's been in other stuff since the Lord of the Rings. Uh, it's funny because she was dating, um, I can't remember his name, Charlie from Lost, uh, Mary from Lord of the Rings, and uh, also in The Rise of Skywalker. And he was also he was in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. She was in the Hobbit sequel trilogy. <laughs> so I guess they had that in common. This is more about the production, this part, rather than maybe the episode guide. That was the hatch and all that. There's just a bamboo forest. That was quite interesting as well, the start of season two, with the hatch that they find and all the stuff going on there with the, um, the countdown and um, the Scottish guy in the Hello Brother. He was always saying. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff as well. I think he's also in the hundred. Yeah, just various shots of this. Oh yeah, this is actually the episode guide now. Homecoming as Kate. Was that Locke and Jack? They were always struggling. They were like the two sides, weren't they? Very much like the nature of the island. All the stuff with the others was great. And of course, uh, Delenn, Mira Fur Furlan was in it and she was great. Yeah, Warriors of the Wilderness. Uh, Clancy Brown was in it as well. Loads of people turned up in it. And was the one Henry, or whatever his name actually was in the show. Oh, uh, of course, Daniel Day Kim. He was great. And so was a lady who played his wife. And their storyline was very interesting. Lots of storylines were interesting, but uh, some of them were really boring. And poor Charlie was always in trouble. Uh, of course, her, what was her name? I can't remember. Um, with the baby. 
And Hurley, he was great as well. There he is there. <laughs> so yes, that's just a look through that. And I also have, and I think this came free with something else, The Lost Novel, because I wouldn't have paid 4 99 for this. That's about guys, where are we? Let's see. Stripped of everything, 48 survivors of Oceanic Flight 815 find themselves stranded on a tropical island. This band of friends, family, enemies and strangers must work together to stay alive. But the island isn't going to make it easy for them. As an environmentalist, Faith Harrington could be one of the biggest assets for the group's survival. I don't remember her from the show, maybe she's only in the book. But the events that lead her to board Flight 815 have left her wrapped with guilt and self-doubt. What a surprise. As Faith reflects on the incidents from her past, she'll have to deal with the present reality of being surrounded by strangers in a hostile new environment. Will this mysterious new world offer Faith an opportunity to start over, or will she fall victim to one of the island's deadly perils? I'm going for option B, and <laughs> there's Kate on there. See, there was loads of fascinating elements that they dropped in, like the hatch and the countdown and the Dharma Initiative and the others, and all of that stuff and the... The films that they viewed as well, the black and white um, tapes and everything. But it just didn't go anywhere. And anyway, yeah, the ending, my understanding of that. That last season is basically following two timelines. There's one where they're all on the island. And then there's the one where they're like living their real lives. My understanding is that all of them living in their real lives, as it were, at that point, they have all died whether they died on the island, they escaped the island, lived a long, 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 long life, and then died. Every single one of them had died, and they were basically in purgatory. And when they start, like, awakening, as it were, um, you know, like when someone will punch them and then they have a flashback to the island or to whatever, that's them realising that they have died and that they need to move on. And at the same time, it's all working out on the island in actual the real world so the very end scene they're all together they've all realized that they're all dead and now is the time for them to move on and that's kind of what happens in that last scene it wasn't very well done i thought but i mean that's what i understand the ending to have meant why don't you guys let me know if you think that that is what the ending was or was it something else entirely but anyway for now that is just my lost collection never to be seen again i expect Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for a common topic you'd like to see discussed or like the video.